you have stage two chronic kidney disease. These were the daunting words I received four and a half years ago that set me on my journey to better understand metabolic health. And sadly, these words weren't something my Seventh-day Adventist physician told me face to face, but rather via text message. And though I asked if I should come in for a consultation, I was told there was no reason to do so. Just eat a vegan diet, stay away from high amounts of protein, and avoid all oils and fats. These were my instructions. Please stay tuned for the rest of the story. Hey folks, Dr. Davis here. Although this physician meant well, she simply didn't know what she was talking about. She was preaching the standard Seventh-day Adventist party line when it came to health, and by her own admission, was following the counsels of Ellen White more than she would accept the science that would prove Ellen White wrong. It was because of this pivotal diagnosis that I decided to do my own research and be my own health advocate and learn all I could, beginning with the all-important concept of kidney function. So, let's talk about how labs and doctors determine kidney health. Now, please understand, I'm not talking about kidney specialists, that is, nephrologists. Rather, I'm talking about the standard family medicine doc, you know, the general practitioner whom you see day to day. My physician's determination was based upon the estimated glomerular filtration rate, that is, the EGFR she saw in my labs, which itself was based on serum creatinine levels, that is, measured by the blood itself. So let's go ahead and start with creatinine, right? Creatinine is a waste product that's made by the muscles, and the kidneys filter creatinine as well as other waste products out of the blood. Creatinine levels either above or below the normal range might indicate the presence of an abnormal health condition. And the key word in this last sentence is might. My physician had a severe case of myopia and only looked at the EGFR based upon creatinine. She analyzed no other markers. Moreover, didn't have a clue as to why the creatinine level might have been high, except for she said, make sure I don't eat too much protein. But her comment was for reasons she didn't even remotely understand. She should have accept, uh, examined my blood urea nitrogen levels, my height and weight, as well as recommended checking the creatinine levels in my urine. Now, before I go much further, let's look at normal creatinine levels for males and females. For males, 60 to 110 micromoles per liter, that is 0.7 to 1.2 milligrams per deciliter, is standard. And for females, 45 to 90 micromoles per liter, or 0.5 to 1.0 milligrams per deciliter, is standard. Now, the docs won't ask too many questions or make any suggestions outside the boxes in which they have been told to stay. But suffice it to say, there are a number of issues that can skew serum creatinine during a blood test. And these include the following. Kidney infection, kidney stones, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, lean body mass, high-intensity exercise, dehydration, and eating a protein-rich diet. Now, in the standard test, most labs assume everybody is the same when it comes to body type. For example, prior to 2021, labs divided people into two groups according to race, black and other. It also assumed that kidney function decreases with age. And it also assumed, which to me was the most gross assumption, if you really get right down to it, is that of body surface area, which is both a function of height and weight. It assumes that everybody is the same in terms of their body surface area. That is 1.73 meters squared. However, we need to understand this is based upon some really outdated pictures of both men and women. The men are five foot nine inches and weigh 165 pounds or 175 and a quarter centimeters weighing just under 75 kilos. And the average woman is five foot four inches tall weighing 125 pounds or just a little under 163 centimeters and a little under 57 kilos. Now these figures are then averaged and voila, we have the standard body surface average for everyone in the world. Now, given the United States and most of Western society, the current obesity problem, I don't think this average is any longer applicable. 
And at the same time, we have to be careful that using actual body surface area for some, for example, those who are morbidly obese, would actually improve a person's estimated kidney function, and so other markers need to be examined. Two other markers, if there appears to be a concern about kidney health, at a minimum should be blood urea nitrogen and the urine albumin to creatinine ratio as well as examining the blood, ure blood urea nitrogen and the creatinine ratio. Those need to be examined at a minimum. Now realize that if your blood urea nitrogen is a little on the higher end, it usually means you have increased protein intake and therefore greater presence of urea in the blood. And a higher ratio of bun to creatinine, possibly, that's if it's outside the normal range, means kidney disease, possibly. Okay, and the same is to be uh, said with ACR. Now, in the past, I had my albumin to creatinine ratio measured, and it was incalculable because the ratio was so low, and that's really a good problem to have. So even though my GFR was in the stage two, my ACR was incalculable and not a cause for concern. But did my doctor tell me this? Absolutely not. Why not? Because she had absolutely no idea. All right. She failed to understand that chronic kidney disease is present when both the GFR and the ACR is less than 60 milliliters per minute and greater than 30 micrograms per gram, respectively, for greater than three months. So that snapshot in time means absolutely nothing. It has to be monitored over a period of three months. And then, after looking at other factors to include perhaps an ultrasound, then a doctor, probably a nephrologist by this time, could make the determination that kidney disease is present. Now, in the lab results I shared in a prior video, my serum creatinine was 1.63 milligrams per deciliter. And after watching the video, some loose-lipped individual commented that my kidney health was terrible based upon this one number. But the one thing this individual clearly doesn't and didn't understand are the factors that contribute to poor kidney health. Now, you have to understand, I have a very lean body mass. I eat a protein-rich diet. And by the way, it still comes in about 25% of my daily energy intake in terms of protein. And I regularly perform high-intensity exercise. Therefore, to remove the confounding variables, I asked my physician just a handful of weeks ago to order a cystatin C test. Now, a cystatin C test, when used alone, is also an estimate. But because it removes many of the confounding variables mentioned above, although it still assumes a body surface area of 1.73 meters squared, it can provide a more accurate picture of kidney health. And when used in conjunction with serum creatinine, this test can either, one, indicate a greater likelihood of a kidney problem based upon serum creatinine levels, or two, allay any cause for concern altogether. My results, thankfully, were the latter. My eGFR, based upon serum creatinine and without adjusting for body surface area in my most recent labs, was 49, which is chronic kidney disease stage 3A. But after the adjustment of actual height and weight, it's 59. And that was based on me weighing 185. I'm now up to a little bit bulkier 190, which puts it at 60. My cystatin C, without any adjustment whatsoever, was 94. So that puts me out of any kind of concern of chronic kidney disease. But once we adjusted for height and weight back at 72 inches and 185 pounds, it's 112. You can see that cystatin C takes care of a lot of problems. And now being a little bit heavier, it's at about 113. But remember, there is an assumption that kidney function decreases with age. And yet, that doesn't have to be the case. These numbers that I just shared with you are based upon me being 55 years old. What is it really? Your guess is as good as mine. But remember, a lot of these data, a lot of these assumptions are, na assumptions are now outdated. So here's the bottom line. Don't let one marker be the driving force behind your physician making a diagnosis. You are now equipped to ask the right questions. And so please have that conversation with your physician should your kidney function be a concern for you. It's imperative that you advocate for yourself. 
The medical community is in the profession of sick care, not health care. And ideally, they would be in the business of going out of business. But sadly, it's a multi-trillion dollar industry finely tuned to keeping its coffers full. And you are part of that game. Please, friend, don't play that game. Now, before you go, please leave your comments below and like and share this video with those who need the info. It really does help the channel grow and reach more people. And if you haven't already done so, I'm going to humbly ask, please subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. Thanks again for watching. This is Dr. Alan Davis wishing above all things that you might prosper and be in health and have life more abundantly than you could ever hope or think. Until next time, take care, be strong, and be a blessing to others. Ciao.